This is Charlie Parsons for the Stomping Ground powered by Well Hydrate and available on the zone. They can't see me, but I am donning my free lions. Frank, I'm on England. Frank, I'm sure you watched the game. Thank you before anything for joining us um, on this lovely morning. Did you watch the game? What did you think? Of course I did. I thought we were brilliant. I thought the first half they were outstanding. The second half, the Dutch got into a bit more, a bit more solid in defence. But um, for all the all the uh, arguments, and I've been one of the people moaning a bit as well about substitutions and so forth with uh, with Gareth. Um, you know, he got it right. Not the two guys he brought on made the goal. A spectacular goal. I mean, it was just it was a brilliant substitution, and uh, and they, and it delivered. And you know. You knew I, I, I'd done a talk sport interview a couple of days ago, and they asked me. I've been saying all the way through. I really do feel I fancy England to win it. I really did. I've said that all the way through, and I said that you know they, despite not looking good, they've got through. They've got That's through. Great they scraped through. Yeah. You know, but, but got there. You know, I've been lucky. Maybe lucky in some ways, but got there. And you need a bit of luck sometimes. But but a lot of the teams have not looked good. The, the, I mean, the outstanding team, obviously Spain. And we've got them in the final. But I, I I generally believe that they gelled last night and I think they're going to be up for this and I think we're going to beat Spain. I don't want to stay on it for too long. Obviously, we're here to talk boxing. But um, I find myself always criticising Southgate throughout tournaments and my friends always go, so it's tournament football is about finding a way to win. It doesn't matter how boring you look or whatever. Are you on the same sort of... Where's your sort of head been with Southgate? Well, it's what do you want? You know, do you want to go out uh, blaze it. I mean, what it is, we're you know we've got a great Premiership league and there's some great football. Certainly this season, it's been very competitive this year, and it, it's um it's an excited. And he took a group group of young players out there, and he obviously took a, a couple of players. He left out the team, which you know, a couple of them I thought well, they should have gone, but they didn't. Um, but having said that, he's um he stuck by his guns. And he's been, I can't say he's been stubborn. He's obviously defensive minded and he has been defensive minded in, in, in some of his play. A lot of the stuff uh, he looked back, you know, the, was, most of the passing was done in our half of the pitch um, and not moving forward. But last night, I mean, we were, we were against a team that does attack and got, and was quite, I mean, for the first bloody, you know, they got that first goal for all, oh, blimey, we're going to be in for it. But it opened up the game. But it opened yeah. up the game. That's what happens. Because now we're in a knockout stage. You're not, you know, you weren't competing to, you know, come top of your group. You know, like, it's more tactically minded. Now it's a knockout job. It's the FA Cup, isn't it? You're in a cup and you're knocking. So it's it's been, it's been more interesting. But, um, you know, look, I mean, when you look at Italy, you look at some of those teams, France. I mean, France only got one goal in open play in the whole oh, tournament. No. Look at the players that they got. Look at Mbappé. He didn't even shine or look anything in in it. Um, it's it's interesting. And then you look at teams like Georgia. Some of a couple of the time, games they had, they bloody they played extreme well. Germany. Um, you know, we, I, I generally feel that we, you know, that we've gelled and uh, and they turn it on and and. Sometimes it's like a fight, isn't it? You you know, you have to, right, you know, the first six rounds, just break him down. He's not got stamina, and we'll see how he gets on in the second half of the fight, and and, you, and the trainer will work his tactics out accordingly. I'll tell you what, you call me a schoolboy, someone who actually is a schoolboy. Have you seen that 16-year-old who's just... Oh, Jesus, and he's seen <laughs> some else, isn't he? What's a goal? And just, I, I think, I'm sure a statistic I heard that no one has scored a goal from a dead ball situation because of the ball. Apparently they're using a different ball and it's not dipping as it's going into goal. And he, and, and he, I mean, it weren't dead ball what he did, oh, but okay. that goal was phenomenal. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Well, Frank, let's talk actual boxing now. Uh, I suppose let's go into it. Um, the Magnificent Seven, I know you've had a few bumps and everything in terms of people, and that's always the way with boxing cards. Yeah. I mean, it's very rare you'll always get the sort of announcement to fight night. Um, but but sort of ready and, and hurdles have been overcome still, still all systems are going. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, Liam's out, which is a you know, it's a real shame because that's a, that was a cracker of a fight. A lot of a lot and a lot of electricity between the two of them. You could see the, you know, it was all it, you knew it was going to be a good fight, but you know, uh, and our man's been so, been doing so well. I mean, he's done everything that's been asked of him, and uh, unfortunately, you know, 
he, it, it's been postponed, but Masu's still on there, so he's fighting on the card still. And we lost David Adelaide as well, which was a shame, but we've replaced him. But the you know the main event Nathan's on, which was a that first fight with him and Brad was a I think is is one of the um uh one of the the the, the fights that are going to be nominated for domestic fight of the year, the first one, and I think the second one will be every bit as exciting. There's no doubt about that. It was a cracker of fight. You know, the atmosphere is going to be good. And the rest of the card is, is extremely, is extremely good as well. Um, on the topic of Nathan Healy now, an incredible ticket seller. People always question to an extent how far we get. And so far it's been brilliant in terms of the journey and the success. Uh, I think Brad Pauls maybe didn't expect a rematch and more credit to you. I think he's gone out and said that for you guys, giving him that opportunity. If, and it is an a, a if. If Nathan does win here, does that sort of stoke? I know there was talk of Eubank or whatever, but does it have to be the, the Stoke City sa- uh, Stadium? Well, it can't be now because obviously the football season starts oh, yes, in August. So we're knackered. So it'll have to be next year. But that's what I want to deliver to him because I said we will deliver it to him. And we've done that to everybody who's, who, you know, who's come with us, like Carl Frampton wanted to fight. Uh, in Belfast at the stadium in Belfast we made that happen we made Josh Warrington's fight happen up in at Leeds United so I want to do it because Nathan deserves it he's been he's been he's been brilliant with us and you know we've got a lot of time for him but he's obviously got to come through a tough fight and if he does they've just got to keep him busy and he's got to keep winning and next year hopefully he'll get that a fight that screams British boxing to me is Joyce Chisora I'm so excited for the fight the cards that's mine all by the way um it was sort of when it was announced i think everyone just sort of went core cool, that don't half make sense does it um we know derek chisora loves the o2 that was his old stomping ground uh joe joyce in a real sort of fight where i think a lot of people don't know what he's got left which is why it's perfect to have derek there but he's fighting for his career really safe to say well they both are you know joe can't afford to lose that fight i mean i've got a record saying i thought derek should have retired a couple of years ago now I may be right, I may be wrong. I'm going to find out on the on, on you know on the on the 27th. We'll see where we are. Um, Derek said, you know, Derek genuinely believes he can beat Joe. Um, Joe the same way. They're both uh, what is it, a couple of years up in their age difference. Um, the winner will go on, and the loser, I think well, that will be he will be done at the top level. I think that is the facts of life. So everything's on the line for both of them. Um, and it's a it's a good fight. I mean, it's a fight that we tried to make many years ago, and we couldn't make it. It's taken a long. You get there's a lot of fights like that over the years, you know, where they've been. You know, we've tried to get us and other promoters try to get fights on, and they're not happening. And eventually, they do happen. They're, they're every as bit as good as what you'd anticipate that they would have been the first time round. Well, Prince Nassim's son and a good friend of the channel, Adam Hamid, makes his debut. How, yeah. Well, Queensbury debut, sorry. Uh, just how excited are you for sort of... Two- I'm very excited. I'm very, I'm very excited. You know, obviously, you know, Naz and I go back a long, long way, um, you know, all the way through. The best part of his career was with myself and him and, you know, his family, and his mum, Alicia. I mean, that's, you know, I've known her since she was... When they were starting to go out with each other. I mean, that's how long I've known, you know, when they first got together and she's a lovely person and uh i've got a real duke uh when it um duty of care with him now i've got to make sure that it's yeah, I know. Just, because it's not like normal like a normal situation where a boxer's got amateur experience and you can look at him and say she's all right I, I know what i've got to do how i've got to bring him through he's had one fight which was a blowout over in poland last year so you know i don't want everybody getting you know because his name's Baby Hamid, they all think you know it's, it's, it's it, this has got to be done properly, and I'll only and the only way it's going to be done is my way. Um, Riyadh season, LA. Are you going to be able to make yourself out there? I know. I know. Yeah, of course, I'm going to be out there. We've got uh, got our, you know our new signings on the card, so yeah, we'll be there for that. So I'm looking forward to that, and uh, and and the Riyadh season uh, Wembley with a with a fight that you mentioned earlier. What a fight that is! Of course. Well, let's go into that. There's been some questions around. Daniel's demeanour, and I don't think it's coming from uh, maybe a disrespectful standpoint, but he's never been a massive talker. We then see this face off, and I think you go right. Let's just leave it to the night, and he has, it almost feels a little out of the blue. Well, we can go now. AJ wasn't having any of it. Um, why are we seeing more of this, Daniel? You, you'll you'll know better than I will. 
I don't know. I think it goes back to the Hergovich fight more than anything because the Hergovich fight, if you remember that round table we done with Buncey, Hergovich was talking, about, kept talking about the um, the sparring. And I spoke to his then manager and trainer, uh, Martin Bowers, who said they had some tough sparring sessions. But you've got to remember, Daniel was a kid and Hergovich was a man. Daniel didn't have any, any, uh, senior amateur experience so he only had a couple of a couple of pro fights so and apparently they were real tough sparring sessions and he made some remark about him basically like i don't know you didn't want to you didn't want to know or something like that and uh and bunts they asked him how he had a fight to finish and he's and uh and uh philippe said uh he's got no balls i say put his hands down he's got no balls he said hey, no i don't worry about it. i'm gonna knock him out whatever and then he asked Daniel, and I'm sitting, obviously, with the, Eddie's there, myself, and two fighters. And then he said, uh, and Daniel, uh, you know, how do you see it ending? And he said, I'm going to knock the C-U-N-T out. And I went, I've never heard him swear ever. And it was like, well, we all did. I mean, all of us. I mean, you have a look at that. If you, if you can go, go and look at the video. I mean, all of, all, everyone's jaw dropped. And uh, and that's what he did. <laughs> Not that mean to see you in tea, but no, 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 of course. Just... And then, uh, and, and it was the same thing, and, and this thing with Daniel, uh, Daniel and uh, AJ. I mean, AJ's obviously the more experienced guy. He's what's he, thirty-four years of age. He's got, he's got an unbelievable amateur pedigree. He's a double world champion, two-time world champion. Um, he's coming off a good run of uh, wins since his last defeat, um, and he's got the pressure on. You know the pressure is on AJ. It's not on Daniel. It's on AJ. He's the guy. He's the he's the guy that everybody would well, say a lot of people you know who are buying tickets or or um, in their opinions whether he will win the fight. Um, but I, I I for me um, I feel Daniel will rise to the occasion, and he certainly did. You know that around that table. I mean, he didn't back down at all. He was very very, you know. He's just confident. And then afterwards, after um, after we had the, uh, up, you know, everyone went, and they were, I was up and I was talking to him to do some other interviews, and we was talking, and uh, and I said to him, you know, like, what's going on here? Can't we sell down and whatever? And he said, no. He said, and he and he said, he said, I'm going to knock him out. No one else there, just me and him. He said, I am going to knock him out. Well, that we will wait and see September the 21st. Mm -hmm. What we do know, I think he has the biggest knockout percentage out of anyone in the top 10 heavyweights. And we have anyone that knows that in the bottom. Well, he can whack. I mean, you know, wherever, you know, all these things are all said. One thing about him is in both hands, he's got tremendous power. Anybody who's been caught by him will tell you that. Um, Joe Joyce, up until he fought to the Zhang fight, probably got the best, everyone was saying had the best chin in the business. He said himself, the hardest he's ever been hit is by Daniel. So one thing's for sure, if he catches AJ, and AJ has, has been caught and has been stopped. So we'll see. Frank, on the topic of Tyson Fury, now it seems to be a little bit quiet from his side, but what I sort of seem to hear a little bit on the ground is that he seems to be in great spirits. There was a, a funny video of him circulating, I don't know whether it was Houston or something, where he going and joined the girls and had a little dance as they prepared for their hen party. Yeah. Um, for a man who, I, I suppose there's always so many questions with Tyson mentality, right? He seems like he's in a good space. I know December's a long time away, but... You want that sort of Tyson, right? That's good signs. He's always in a good, you know. He's he's pretty philosophical about life. I mean, he's, you know, he's had far more challenges in life than getting than a loss to Usyk. Far, far more serious things, and he's come through those. And uh, and yeah, there was nothing in that fight, as as we all know. And he's he he wants he, he seriously wants that wants the uh, rematch. I mean, that's all he all he was talking about to me all the time. He's on holiday at the moment, so. Just rest up. He'll come back and he'll start getting to his light training, get yourself all prepared and for the heavy duty stuff. Probably he'd go into training camp in October or sometime sometime around then. But he's he he wants this fight badly, and it's going to be a great fight. It will be a great fight between the two of them. There's no doubt about that. And uh, and 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 you know, I I I do believe that he has he has the ability to stop him. 
two more from me, quick ones. Um, Eddie Hearn, when I spoke to him, he revealed that you guys actually WhatsApp back and forth, whether it's ideas or whatever. Um, it's crazy, really, the boxing landscape and how much things have changed for the better, I suppose. Sorry, what was the back and forth? We WhatsApp back and forth with each other. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which just, yeah. I was like, surely not. And he said, yeah, we do. Um, now, I know that that was more 5v5 orientated and stuff like that. But I suppose looking forward to, I know you've got the Riyadh season LA card. You'll be together then. But even more like to that UK event stuff. Yeah, like I want to do that 5v5 again. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was, a, I mean, for obvious reasons, I want to do it. But, you know, I want to do that again. It was a great concept. And I'm sure Eddie will want to do it again because it was um he want to get his try and get his revenge, not get his revenge, try and get it. But I think it, you know, it's that and and we're you know we're working. But we're, there's a lot of fights happening there. Um, you know, the the the, the great fights for the boxing and obviously for the paying public, and that that's what it's all about. And we're all doing well out of it ourselves. Of course. Um Anthony Yard, finally for me, where are we at with the situation? Look, me as an, an as an onlooker, um I, I don't know at the moment, it is what it is. But does it almost feel, I say this as a third party looking in, but given the position that like, ev ev what it seems the British boxing scene is in, in terms of opportunities out in Saudi Arabia, whether it be on a, potentially there was talk of him on a Wembley card, it just seems, does it feel a bit daft to you? Are you hurt? I mean, what's the emotion around it now? I know no, I mean, it's, listen, I've, I've, I've said enough of what I've got to say about that. It is what it is now. Um, you know, he's, you know, I'm, dis I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed, but it is what it is. Um, he's taken advice, and let's hope that down the road that advice stands him in good stead. That time will tell. It's a shame. It's a shame. I'm, 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 as I say, but I'm disappointed, and it is what it is. Frank Warren, you're a diamond. Thank you ever so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you hopefully some point next week. You certainly will, Charlie. You hear, you hear me on Sunday if we win. You hear me and all. It's coming home, Frank. It's coming home, mate. See you soon, mate. Thank you ever so much. Good job.